Hello everyone, my name is Amir. In this presentation, I introduce Shadow Move, which is a stilty lateral movement strategy that can be abused by APTs. APT attackers use various lateral movement techniques to gradually expand uh, their access within enterprise networks. In this way, they can access critical assets buried deep inside compromised networks. A real example of such an attack is the Equifax breach in 2017 attributed to APT10. In such attacks, the attackers first try to find a foothold within the target network, typically by exploiting a public server or sending spear phishing emails to employees. Then they use this system to compromise neighboring systems and they repeat this process till they reach critical assets. Now let's take a look at the most commonly used lateral movement techniques by cyber attackers. The first technique is to find and exploit a vulnerability in a remote uh, network service, such as, uh, uh, such as SMB or RDP. Fortunately, due to advances in defense mechanisms, finding and exploiting such vulnerabilities becomes harder and harder. Another technique is to harvest user credentials or access tokens from compromised systems and reuse them to access remote systems. Commonly, a new connection is created and a user authentication process is performed, which can be detected by anomaly-based detection systems. The third approach is to inject application and protocol-specific code into a legitimate client application to reuse its sockets. The injected code uses these sockets to send malicious queries to the remote endpoints. The problem with this approach is that many existing EDR systems, such as Windows Defender ATP, can detect and prevent existing process injection techniques. Unlike the previous techniques in Shadow Move, no new connection is created, and also no extra uh, authentication is performed, as the core idea in Shadow Move is to reuse existing authenticated connections on the compromised system to perform lateral movement. To reuse the existing connections, uh, Shadow Move process does not require to elevate its privilege. Moreover, on Windows, it does not inject any code into legitimate processes. Last but not least, Shadow Move is application agnostic in the sense that it does not need any prior knowledge about the implementation details such as memory layout of its target processes. Before getting into details, let's uh, take a brief overview on uh, uh, how Shadow Move replicates itself to a remote system. Suppose on a compromised system, a client is connected to a remote server and Shadow Move process is running. The client process uses its uh, socket to send an, uh, a request to the remote server and also to receive the corresponding response from the server. Shadow Move uh, first duplicates the socket owned by the client uh, process. Shadow Move can pick from these uh, duplicated sockets to uh, sniff at the server responses without interrupting the client. However, to send a request to the remote server, Shadow Move should suspend the client process to prevent the possibility of colliding with the client's uh, traffic as they both share the same underlying input output buffers. Once the client is suspended, Shadow Move can uh, send its a uh, request to the remote server to perform various operations such as upload or download a file and also executing a command. To move laterally to the remote system, it needs to first upload its program and then to execute itself. Now let's go deeper and see how Shadow Move works internally. It is composed of six different modules. Peer Handler is responsible to exchange network view with other Shadow Move instances. Connection Detector module detects uh, new established connections. They both rely on socket uh, duplicator to duplicate sockets. Network View Manager updates the network view and socket pool based on the information received from Peer Handler and Connection Detector. Periodically, Lateral Movement Planner is launched based on the existing socket pool and current network status, uh, it comes up with the most appropriate action plan. It then invokes lateral movement uh, plan actuator to implement the plan. Modern operating systems offer uh, socket duplication. However, it requires the cooperation of the socket owner process. 
let's suppose a, a client process on Windows wants to connect to a remote server and then share the resulted socket with a partner process. First, it calls WSA socket and WSA connect APIs to connect to the remote server. Then it gets the process ID of its partner. Next, it calls a WSA duplicate socket to obtain necessary information to reconstruct the socket. This information is passed to the partner process via an IPC channel. The partner process uses uh, the received information to reconstruct the socket by calling WSA socket. The resulted socket can be used to communicate with the remote server. Usually the uh, uh, client process closes its socket after sharing it with its partner. Shadow move uh, socket duplicator duplicates a socket from an owner process without its cooperation. On Windows, it takes the following 10 steps to duplicate a socket from a process which is running under the same privilege as shadow move process. To detect a new connections, connection detector period periodically gets a list of established TCP connections and compare it with the most recent list. It then filters out the new connections owned by processes that cannot be accessed by shadow move due to lack of privilege. Next, it calls socket duplicators to duplicate the sockets corresponding to the new connections. Peer handler module is responsible for synchronizing shadow move network view and history of committed uh, actions with the neighboring shadow move instances. By neighboring, I mean its uh, predecessor and successor nodes. It listens for a synchronization signal on duplicated sockets. Upon receiving such a signal, it suspends the owner process uh, and exchanges the network view using a custom protocol. It also peri periodically sends out its uh, current network view to neighboring instances by first uh, sending synchronization signals on the duplicated sockets. Considering the current network view, current socket pool, and previous action plans performed by all shadow move instances, lateral movement planner formulates the next uh, lateral movement action plan based on a product uh, program. In this slide on the left, you see the predicates that describe the current network view, history of committed actions, and prior knowledge shared among shadow move instances. Suppose the third system wants to uh, see whether it can execute shadow move on the target. In order to do so, this system must evaluate commit execute operation uh, predicate. This predicate first checks whether the two systems are connected with an application protocol that allows execution of a file. Then checks whether there exists a chain of compromised systems originated from the foothold system that allow, allows uh, uploading files on the target system. Next, it uh, checks whether the shadow move program has already been uploaded on the target. In this example, all of these conditions are met. As a result, the third uh, system can execute a uh, shadow move file uploaded by the second system. This example shows how uh, operation uh, cooperation between shadow move instances can help them to compromise systems that they cannot compromise individually. Lateral movement plan actuator crafts a set of requests to perform the assigned action plan, such as uh, uploading a file to a remote FTP server. In, uh, it has a set of protocol handlers, each of which is responsible for a specific application protocol. This example shows how FTP protocol handler uploads a file to a remote server using a socket duplicated from a FTP client. We implemented prototypes of shadow move uh, for Windows and Linux, tested them on uh, Windows 10 and Ubuntu 18.04. The planner uh, logic is implemented in SWI uh, product. A demo of uh, shadow move uh, leveraging FTP is available online and you can access it via the following link. You can also reach us if you like to uh, get the source code of shadow move prototypes. Now let's talk briefly on why shadow move is possible. The first problem is conflicting between process isolation and resource sharing requirements on commodity operating system. On one hand, 
they require us to provide a resource uh, uh, sharing. And on the other hand, they have to protect these resources from user processes. The second problem is lack of proper message integrity validation in many standard uh, protocols, allowing attackers to inject arbitrary uh, requests into an established connection without being noticed. We tested Shadow Move against top five antiviruses and uh, three IDSs and two EDR systems, and none of them were able to detect Shadow Move operation. Like any solution, Shadow Move also has some limitations. First, it cannot hijack connections that implement user level encryption like SSH clients. Second, in WinRM case, the Shadow Move uh, should duplicate the socket uh, before the start of negotiation phase so that it can learn the shell ID. Third, our current uh, prototype on Linux relies on code injection to duplicate a socket. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation. Please contact us if you need uh, further information.